We had Joe Biden come in. Remember, he was supposed to unify us all. Instead, he's called everyone who doesn't agree with his policies racist. Anybody who doesn't agree with his gun grab to try and destroy the Second Amendment somehow in favor of mass shootings. Joe Biden has done everything he could with every policy prescription to try and divide this country, all the while pretending as though these issues are happening to him. And the wobbly economy, international threats, the issue of abortion, the cost of a tank of gasoline, and the dangerous increase in crime in major cities across the country. Hogan Gidley has been watching all this from outside the White House since he left when President Trump did. He joins us tonight from Washington. Hogan, good to see you. Great to be with you, Doug. Thanks so much for the time. Absolutely. Uh, to the primaries now. Uh, a lot of these are pro forma exercises in, in these primaries today. Uh, no gubernatorial races really in, in jeopardy that we can see. But what sticks out in your mind in terms of these races today? Seven states. Look, I think I think the media focuses largely on who Donald Trump endorsed. Did he get involved? Uh, did he did he buck some of his own staff? You know, what, what is what is Donald Trump up to seems to be the prevailing concern for the mainstream media. Uh, while his record right now is 106 uh, for all the endorsements he's given to candidates who have actually won, the real issue to me is the America First policy agenda is undefeated. Most of these candidates are clamoring for the days of old, just two years ago, when we saw record-setting success and record-setting time, when we had a border that made sense, uh, when we had low gas prices, when we had a reduction in crime, when there wasn't drugs pouring across uh, our southern border, uh, when the human trafficking and child smuggling, the horrific act that both of those things are, uh, didn't, didn't occur at the levels they're doing now. Uh, that's what people are really looking for, some, some strength, um, but also some, some, some logic and some reason to some of the policies right now that are really causing the American people to suffer out there. One thing I really learned inside the White House, Doug, is that policies matter and good policies uh, make people's lives better. And, um, you know, bad policies hurt the American way of life. And you're seeing a lot of bad policies out there right now that continue to cripple American families. And I think the American people are frustrated with it. They're tired of it and they're looking for changes, even in places uh, with these local races out in San Francisco and L.A., for example, with local with local uh, D.A.s and, and, and mayor's races. Yeah, Chessie Budin, uh, first and foremost in San Francisco, who's just got an abysmal record of prosecutions of, of criminals there. Also, we're seeing that reflected in the mayor's race in Los Angeles. And even at the gubernatorial level, that's, that is one state where there is an interesting race uh, with Governor Newsom facing Michael Schellenberger, who... Uh, I've interviewed many times. He's an environmentalist, and I've always interviewed him on environmental issues. But now he's transitioned into the quality of life in California and the issue of crime there. Yeah, it seems like people out on the West Coast are quite concerned about it. Sadly, this issue really didn't become a national conversation until the rich were affected. Let's be honest. I mean, we've seen drugs uh, increase uh, in that part of the country. We've seen homelessness. You can just go up and down the streets, even on Rodeo Drive. You have to be concerned about the watches you wear, the bracelets you have on, the rings on your fingers, the cars you drive. And all of a sudden, people out there who make a lot of money, the affluent, are being affected by the crime that used to just be off to the side or in the shadows. They didn't have to worry about it. Now they're seeing these drug deals happen right before their very eyes. They're seeing money exchange hands. They're experiencing the robberies and assaults. And I think the, the people there are a little frustrated, and rightly so. They ought to be angry. But this whole defund the police movement, I would argue, led by Joe Biden, led by some other prominent Democrats, the vice president pushed for a bail funding to get those folks out of jail that were causing all the destruction across this country for the better part of two years. Um, that's, that's something the Democrat Party has embraced, and I think the American people are fed up with it. You're seeing that even in places like liberal California. Mm -hmm. uh, as you stated, a lot of people are clamoring for the good old days. But in many respects, they want to see a return to the good old days without the guy who led to the achievements of the good old days, which was your former boss, President Trump. He remains an incredibly divisive figure in this country. Do you think he's going to run again? Well, look, I I've spoken with him many times, even had dinner with him uh, not too long ago, about a, a month ago now. And uh, I would have said about 60, 40 yes to no a few months ago. Now, I think it could even be more like 80, 20. I think he wants to run. I think he wants to deliver for the American people that second term uh, success that we 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 had in the first term, only building on it even better. 
uh, because Joe Biden's been talking about building back better. Nothing's built and nothing's back and nothing's better. And so uh, the American people, I think, are going to be a little bit more um, anxious to get someone in office who can further the, the make America great again mantra, the American first policies that Donald Trump had. Um, you know, I, I did I did. I, I do want to make the point to you. I, I don't think if Donald Trump comes back, the media are going to welcome him back with open arms. and The Democrats are going to say, thankfully, we have someone who's going to make us successful again. And I don't want the president, uh, the former president, to have any allusion to that fact. But the policies were successful. The American people felt it and they know who delivered for them. It was Donald Trump. And so whether he runs or whether someone else runs and I give speeches all over the country and I get asked the same question. He's going to be involved one way or the other, either as a candidate or as a kingmaker. You've, you've just headed at the, at the divisiveness that, that would come if he chooses to run again. Perhaps that's most manifested in this hearing that we're going to see, this January 6th hearing, which is being staged in, in primetime television. Uh, Nancy Pelosi wanted it that way, and she's even gone so far as to hire a former ABC producer, kind of a tabloidy yeah. uh, kind of a producer to stage. I think, I think it's the only big hearing that's ever been held in prime, not even the Watergate hearings, as Britt Hume mentioned the other day, were, were televised in prime time, which does that speak of, of desperation in your mind? It's also very telling that this is all about politics. Uh, they're trying not to get Donald Trump to run again. They're trying to taint him as best they can. Democrats can't run on any successes. They don't have any. I feel bad as a comms guy for Jen Psaki and for Karine Jean-Pierre. I hate to even say that, they got nothing to work with. They're trying to rub two sticks together. While in the Trump administration, we had a Zippo. We were doing things right and left for the American people. Democrats haven't been able to accomplish anything except death uh, with their with their lax crime uh, policies, higher gas prices, higher grocery prices, a uh, 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 southern border that's porous. It's allowing millions of people into this country illegally and unlawfully. But I want to hit on something you mentioned, which is the divisiveness. Donald Trump did not destroy politics. It was already destroyed. He wasn't the murderer. He was the coroner. He showed up and said, this is all a joke. It's a scam. I'm going to work on behalf of the American people. And he did that. We had Joe Biden come in. Remember, he was supposed to unify us all. Instead, he's called everyone who doesn't agree with his policies racist. Anybody who doesn't agree with his gun grab to try and destroy the Second Amendment somehow in favor of mass shootings, Joe Biden has done everything he could with every policy prescription to try and divide this country, all the while pretending as though these issues are happening to him, as if gas prices just went up without any uh, policy changes by uh, Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. These problems are all happening because of him. The American people know it. That's why I think we're going to see a massive change in November, and hopefully that carries through to uh, 2024 as well. We've got about 30 seconds left, Hogan. Uh, you said you had dinner with former President Trump uh, recently. Give me a sense, uh, as, as con confide in us, <laughs> me and all the viewers here, uh, as close as you can, will he run again? What did you sense from that dinner? Uh, you know, as I said, Doug, I think he really wants to. I think yeah, as a billionaire businessman, uh, just sitting on the sidelines for decades. I mean, go back and look at his conversations with Oprah in the 80s. He was talking about China then trying to eat our lunch. Look at what we've allowed China to become under Joe Biden. So I think Donald Trump sees from the sidelines what he could do to make people's lives better. And he wants to get involved to do just that. We actually accomplished those things in a short time in four years uh, in a single term. And I think he wants to come back and do it again a second time to try and make sure that he finishes uh, all of the uh, the attempts to, to improve our lives uh, for another four years, but also uh, build on some of the successes he was able to, to deliver on behalf of the people before. H Hogan Gidley, I, I have a feeling from that response that perhaps we'll see you on the radar screen down the road again somewhere. Really appreciate your time, and please come back if you would. Thanks, Doug. Anytime. Appreciate it. Hi, I'm Doug McElway, and thank you for watching Centerpoint. We hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Leave a comment below and keep the conversation going by sharing this video with a friend who needs to see it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow.